All right, hey, peace, everybody. So I just wanted to make a video about fear. And I was just reading this in Revelation. It made me think about it. And I wrote a couple of scriptures. I'm going to go through each one and talk about fear and why we shouldn't have fear. So this is Revelation chapter 21, verse 7 and 8. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God. He shall be my son, but the fearful and the unbelieving, the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, when I was reading this, I was thinking, fearful, that's in the same category as a murderer or a sorcerer. And I was like, why is that? Why is fear considered such a, 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 a bad sin and compared to those other ones? And it made me think, because he commanded us not to, to have fear. And let's read, let's go to Joshua, chapter 1, where he commands Joshua not to have fear. Let's read just the first chapter. Um, now, after the death of Moses, the servant of Yehoah, it came to pass that the Yehoah spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. Thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness in this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down the sun, shall be your coast. There shall be not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life, <clears throat> as I was with Moses. So I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and good courage, for unto this people shall I divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe and do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right or to the hand right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wherever so wherever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, and thou shalt meditate there on day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have this success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong of good and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou, be thou dismayed, for Yahuwah your God is with you wherever so go, wherever thou goes. <clears throat> And it just made me think, you know, that commandment that he gave, you know, to um, be strong and courageous. It's like that's what we have to always be at all times. And it makes me think of this psalm that coincides with that verse. This is Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the sea of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in this law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water, and bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever so he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahuwah knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And that's just, you know, very similar to what the Most High told Joshua. Now let's go back to Deuteronomy. And the reason why Joshua was told not to have that fear to be strong and be courageous. Because he promised that he'll always be with you. And he said, I'll fight for you. And this is Deuteronomy chapter 20. When thou goes out into a battle against thy enemies and see horses and chariots and a people more than thou. Be not afraid of them, for Yahuwah your God is with you, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be, when you are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. And shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto the battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not. Do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For Yahuwah your God is he that goes with you, 
to fight for you against your enemies to save you. You know, he's, he's always there. Let's cross-reference that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 13. Uh, what is it? Hebrews. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, Yahuwah is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So, you know, that's just what it is, man. We always have that confidence. And it made me think, you know, um, in Revelation, he says, then all the fearful won't be able to go to the kingdom of heaven. And it makes sense because it was fear, the reason why the Israelites weren't able to go to the, um, to the promised land. When you go to Numbers chapter 13, uh, Numbers chapter 13, when the spies, they came back from the promised land, uh, only um, Joshua and Caleb, they're the only ones that gave a good report. But then, look at this. But the men that went out with them said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land, though, the land, um, through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eat up of the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in our men of the great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our sight as grasshoppers, so we were in their sight. And all the congregation lifted up their, their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God have had died in a in this wilderness? Wherefore hath Yahuwah brought us into the land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And then uh, the rest of the chapter, he just talked about how they were just so afraid of the people in the promised land, Canaan. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. That shows the, 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 the lack of confidence that they had, not in themselves, not just in themselves, but also in their God. And then, you know, so that's why... The Most High got so provoked by them. He's saying, Yahuwah said to Moses, how long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me for the signs which I've shown them? And that's what he said, you know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. In Hebrews chapter 11, because you have to believe that he is. You got to have faith in him. That's why faith is the, the essential. It's like, if you don't have faith, you can't please God at all. Because they all they did was doubt him the whole time, the whole time. So that's why, you know, the Most High, he was so provoked by them. And so that's what, you know, they understand. It's like fear is a lack of faith. And you, when you have fear, you don't have faith in the Most High. You know, you have fear. You um, The Hebrew word fear is yare. And that means to uh, like to, uh, to be fearful or to, to be in awe of or uh, to be afraid of. And it said, you know, in the scriptures, it said the only thing we're supposed to be afraid of is the Most High. Um and I say, I need to actually read that. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And it says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are two sparrows sold for a farthing or a penny? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, you are more valuable, or you are of more value than the sparrows. So it's like, that's what we got to have. We got to have faith in the most high. We're not supposed to have faith in uh, the things that, you know, our future or, um, you know, things that we can't see. Uh, our enemies, you know, it's like, in a way, you're worshiping that. When you have fear of that, things to come. You're you're um, you're putting your faith and your trust in that, and not in the Most High. You know that's what the world does, but we're called not to do that. Let's read Isaiah chapter eight, and he says right here, "Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people say a confederacy? Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid, because that's what the people do. They say confederacy, confederacy. They try to get confederate with something or." Uh, ESV uh, translates say conspiracy, conspiracy. 
That's what the world says. But he said, you don't be afraid like them. He said, sanctify Yahuwah of hosts. Sanctify the Lord of hosts. Sanctify him. He's the only one that's supposed to be set apart. He, and let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. He shall be your sanctuary. And for a stone, a stumbling, and for a rock of offense for both the house of Israel, for a gin and for a snare in the happiness of Jerusalem. And so that's what the thing is, man. The most high is our strength. He's the only one that we should fear. We shall only be afraid of him. We shouldn't be afraid of things to come because we know that everything is in his hands. You know? Because um, we don't want to be like Adam. So, yeah, actually, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Because we see that all sin is always related to fear. This is why after Adam and Eve ate from the, from the tree, good and evil. Uh, knowledge of good and evil in verse 9 and, and Yahweh uh, Yahu Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou and he said I heard thy voice in the garden I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself so you see that's that fear man it's, it's, it's a continuous thing just like that sin is passed on that fear is passed on and that's the thing and when we read the word we gotta understand that we don't have that you know it's like the first Adam you know we we inherit that um that, that spirit of fear, but through but through Christ with the um, Yahusha the Messiah, we don't have that spirit of fear. We get we have the Holy Spirit. We have the the set apart spirit of the Most High. Oh my God! Um, going to Timothy. So Second Timothy, chapter one. Yeah, right here. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, of love, and a sound mind. See, that's the thing, that spirit of fear, man. Don't let that overcome you. Don't let that overcome you, man. This is the last thing I want to read. Just, uh, I think, because the Messiah, he knew we were going to go through days like this, man. He knew we were going to go through days like this, you know. I was just praying this, um, you know, praying that our um, our people would come together. That we would, you know, get out of the snares of uh, Christianity and religion. That we'll come back to the true essence of the scriptures and really obey the Most High and obey His Son. I, I really pray for that. That we can be a real community. And I remember, so I, I remember when I, when the Messiah, um, when I was reading this one time, this is Messiah speaking. He spoke and he spoke this parable unto them to the end that men ought to always pray and not to faint. And other version says not to lose heart. And he said this, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of my advers adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said unto himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continued coming, she would wear me out. And um, the Lord and the master said, hear what the unjust judge said. He shall not and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear along with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith in the earth? And he spake this parable unto certain trusting themselves and they were righteous and despise others. Um, but yeah, that's all I want to say, man. I mean, it's just. Not having that spirit of the fear in you. Always you know, trust in the most high. You know, it's that other verse that says, you know, um, you know, uh, the birds, you know, they don't they don't sow, they don't reap. But your heavenly father feeds them. The same thing with us, man. We don't have to be worried about what everybody, the whole world is worried about. We have a heavenly father in heaven. <laughs> we have a family history redundant. We have a father in heaven who cares about us. You know, he's not going to let us suffer. Uh, we're going to go through trials and tribulation, of course. You know, that's just, that's written. But he's going to help us. He's going to deliver us out of that. You know, just always, I got to always have faith in him, man. So I just pray all that, um, this for the elect, um, the body of Messiah, the 12 tribes, you know, whatever you want to call y'all. You know, all of us together, man, we're going we're gonna to get through this together. All right, man. Shabbat shalom.